ask you to do that again. Let's drive off when you're ready. Hi guys and welcome back to Clearview Driving. Today I'm doing a mock test with Tyra. Now this is the first time we are driving together and you've travelled all the way from uh, East London. East London, so she's done a long drive, not drive, but a long travel this morning. And your test is in just three days time. Yeah. How are you feeling? A bit nervous, but yeah. <laughs> so your instructor's got the same car as this, so that yeah. would make life a bit easier. And uh, you've not done a mock test and you've not done a test. Never. But you've been driving for, I think you said just under a year, was it? Yeah, on and off. On and off, okay. All right, so we're going to get started. You kind of know what's involved in a mock test? Do you want me to tell you? Um, I think I know, yeah. Okay, so just going to be following the road. It's all about you driving safely. It's not about being perfect. If you make a few mistakes, don't worry. All right, so I want you to drive straight the whole time. We're going to do one manoeuvre. We may also carry out the emergency stop. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Could you tell me... Where would you find the engine oil and how do you make sure it's at the correct level? The engine oil would be in, if you open the bonnet mm -hmm. and you can check if it's at the correct level if it's in between the, I think, max and min line. Okay. In between. That sounds good. Yeah, that's fine. Um, for anyone that's new to the channel, don't forget to like the video, comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now we're going to get straight into it. Okay. Yeah. So, whenever you're ready, I'd like you to start the engine. Oh. And I'm going to give you normal instructions throughout, okay? Yeah. So drive off whenever you're ready. Oh, no. The road ahead is not wide enough for two vehicles to pass as there are parked vehicles on both sides. So when this is the case, you need to position your vehicle in the centre of the road. Tyra manages to space really well, especially when the road gets a bit tighter, she slows down and goes back into first gear. When driving through narrow spaces like this, always check your mirrors and be aware of your surroundings. Tyra does this really well. Tyra's got a really good routine with her feet. She uses the brake until she's slow, putting the clutch down very close to the end of the road. As she stops, she selects first gear to start again. Towards Ricelip. 
We're following the road ahead on the roundabout, which is the second exit. Tyra signals right before she enters, which gives her a minor fault for unnecessary use of signals. She also nearly gets a serious fault on the entry of the roundabout. The vehicle on the roundabout, had they been any faster, this would have given her a serious fault. When exiting a roundabout, always use your mirrors towards the left and signal left to exit. This did not go down as a minor fault as we were already in the left hand lane. But if you have to switch lanes, you should always check your mirrors. Tyra is using third gear when driving down this road. Now being in third gear, you're definitely going to be more fuel efficient, but it's very easy to go over the speed limit. So you only want to press down on the accelerator by a little bit to maintain the speed. Tyra does go over the speed briefly on this road, but she does control it very quickly. She does get a minor fault for this. Whenever Tara waits at a traffic light or at the end of a road, she's got a habit of putting the car into hold. This is quite similar to having the parking brake on. While waiting with the hold, she brings the clutch up to the biting point and any time she needs to move off, she presses the accelerator to release the hold. Now we're doing this, it's not a mistake in terms of a driving test, but it will burn out the clutch plates over time as you're waiting on the biting point the whole time. You should wait with the clutch down fully and only bring the clutch up to the biting point when you wish to move off. Most new cars tend to auto rev, so you can hear that the biting point is quite high. Before leaving a roundabout, always check your mirrors to the left and signal left that you're exiting the roundabout. As we're exiting, we're in the right hand lane so we need to merge on the exit. As the two lanes merge on the exit, you need to merge and turn. There was a vehicle close behind but Tyra deals with this really well. The truck behind us starts overtaking at this point and this is a prime example of where you should not overtake. You should never overtake anyone on zigzag lines of a pedestrian crossing. Leading up to this roundabout, Tyra does position on the right to make the right turn, but she indicates quite late. As we're travelling at 40 miles per hour, aim to signal between 8 to 10 car lengths, making sure there are no entrances before the one you're taking. As we're going round the roundabout, this is now the second exit that's ahead of us. At this point, Tyra should have checked her mirrors and gone into the outside lane as you pass the exit. That way, you can exit more easily. At the point that she does move into the left lane, it could be an issue if somebody enters the roundabout from exit number two and we're trying to exit the roundabout at the exact same time. Tyra does make really good progress on the slip road. But as we're going forward, she doesn't realise that it's a slip road where she has to change lanes by the end. She thinks it's a new lane being added. 
Leading up to the end of the slip road, the lorry that was in the lane next to us started flashing their headlights to get our attention that they're giving way. But Tyra didn't signal at this point and didn't notice this. is now changing from 50 to 40 miles per hour. Tara does step off the accelerator to slow down, but as we're going downhill, this doesn't help, so she needs to brake to slow down and bring down the speed quicker. We're now at the end of our independent drive, so Tara needs to carry on driving as normal. On the left, there's a sign which shows us that there's a new lane being added. So the middle lane now becomes the position for overtaking rather than normal driving. So Tyra needs to move back into the left-hand lane. She doesn't realise at first and carries on driving in the middle lane for a little while, but she's at the speed of the road. As soon as she realises, she starts checking her mirrors and moves back straight away. So this did not go down as a fault as nobody was going out of their way to overtake her. As we came off the slip road, Tara moves into the right hand lane without indicating. Now the signal wasn't necessary as nobody was actually around us. She carries out smooth progressive braking to stop by the end and switches straight back into first gear. Third exit. Yes, third exit. As we enter the roundabout, Tara can go into the middle or the far right lane as they both have a right arrow. She goes into the far right lane, which makes it harder for her to exit the roundabout. So at this point, we should have been checking the mirrors towards the left and moving into the middle lane under the bridge. But Tyra stays in the third lane, which is now supposed to be going back round the roundabout. She did realise this fairly quickly and it was safe to switch lanes, so she could have even switched lanes at this point instead of going back round the roundabout. Tara stopped in second gear and didn't realise this, so as she moves off, she's now moving off in second gear. Now this is not a fault as long as the engine does not switch off. As we're going round the roundabout from this point, Tara needs to now be checking her mirrors to the left again to go into the left hand lane under the bridge. But she continues going round in the middle lane. Now this is not an issue again as we can exit from this lane, but it just makes it harder as we now need to switch towards the left lane as we exit.
As we're going forward, we're now entering a 20 miles per hour zone. As you enter a new road, there'll be gateway signs if the speed limit has changed. Tyra doesn't realize this and she continues driving up to 26 miles per hour. While waiting at a junction like this, it's always a good idea to keep looking both ways instead of just to the right, as sometimes pedestrians may step into the road in front of you from the left. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is to reverse back for the length of, sorry, <laughs> I'd like you to reverse back for about two car lengths, keeping a reasonable distance from the pavement and try not to touch the curb as you do this. Okay. Before starting to reverse, always look around checking both blind spots, making sure that nobody is close to your vehicle. Tara carries out this exercise really nicely, but as we're reversing on a downhill slope, the car reverses back fairly quickly. So it's a good idea to use the foot brake to slow the car down. She is checking over her shoulders, but not so much over her right blind spot. This did not go down as a fault as she was checking and it was clear throughout. That's fine, thank you. Drive off when you're ready. carry out the emergency stop okay so as you're driving down this road I'm going to make sure it's nice and safe and that no one is around us and I'm going to give you this signal stop 
As soon as you get that signal, I'd like you to stop the car as quickly and as safely as possible. I will make sure it's safe before I get you to carry out the stop, okay? Yeah. Okay, so whenever you're ready, let's drive off. Tyra doesn't bring the clutch high enough so the car doesn't move off at this point. She then starts checking inside the car at the gears. Now before moving off from this position, she should have checked over towards the right hand blind spot again. She gets marked down for this. to do that again. Let's drive off when you're ready. switch off the engine as well. All right, thank you. Just give me a few moments. All right, so that's the end of your driving test. How was your drive today? It was all right. Yeah. So what happened when we were joining the uh, dual carriageway? The thing is, I thought it was in its own separate lane. That's why I was taking long to join the dual carriageway. Yeah. But then, when I was getting closer to the end, I saw it going yeah. at an angle. So I was like, oh my God, I need to Yeah. Go in there. Now, there was a lorry next to you. Before you moved over, he was flashing his lights quite a few times, oh, getting okay. your attention that, you know, come in, I'm giving you way. And now it's getting right up to the end. Like you said, it was cutting in and we're getting closer and now your attention's gone on the lorry and now I had to take control at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how would you know if it was its own lane? There's usually that sign kind of, oh, I'll point it on the video at this point, but there's usually that sign which kind of goes in at an angle and then straightens up and the other two lanes are running up. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, whereas it, it was just a slip road going in to join the carriageway. Okay. Um, it's quite a long slip road as well, mm -hmm. so yeah, that was a bit of an issue there. Then also we've had use of speed. What speed were you driving on that 20 road? I think it was like 24. Yeah, you went 26 by the time I told you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so you're up to 26. I thought, okay, if she hits about 25 and carries on, I'm going to tell her. So yeah, you went to 25, 26 and I had to tell you. But before that as well, there were two, three other points where you did go over 20 zones. Yeah, I realised that. Yeah, so you need to control that speed a little bit. Um, let's talk about some of the other kind of hairy moments that I thought you could have done a little bit better. Your junction observation on two of the roundabouts, we kind of moved in. One of them was a gap where I was thinking, mm -mm, that's not looking good. Mm. There was that BMW coming on your right. I think. It was one of the first roundabouts where we went right slip. Oh yeah. So we were in the right lane and before entering, you've put on a right signal to go straight. We didn't need a right signal. Oh yeah, when you go across the 
Yeah. yeah. So you got a minor for your signal correctly at that point. And then as you enter, there was a BMW already entering and it was quite a close call. Um, but he didn't react badly and they kind of carried on as normal. So it wasn't that bad. So it went down as a minor on that count. But it was a quite a, like a, a why are we doing this? <laughs> and then the next one was um, on another big roundabout where we're having to give way and go. And there's a big lorry approaching again. It's not like, oh, you shouldn't take it. It's just the lorry's coming at speed. You've just come in and gone out of his path and then he's had to he's carried on but it's just like oh either go earlier and quicker or just wait for a safer you're really good at with your gears kind of getting up to the next gear which is great um i want to talk about some of your habits that you have oh let's talk about sorry let's talk about the emergency stop how's the emergency stop quite heart racing i think <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that emergency stop. God, I did not expect that. I was thinking she's probably going to break sharp. She's going to like really go for it, and you did. So, in terms of like an emergency stop for a test, great, you did stop the car. But did you realise the ABS went off? Do you know what the ABS is? Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh, I actually remembered this like thirty minutes ago. Oh, no. So okay. it's the anti-lock braking system. Yeah. So when you stamp on the brake or you brake really quite sharp, the brake pad comes into contact with the brake disc and they lock up and you lose grip of the road surface, mm -hmm. which okay. is what happened. And the ABS, the job is it kind of breaks that connection between the two and then reapplies the brake, which is why it juddered a little bit. You heard that noise? So that's what that was. Um, and doing an emergency stop and the ABS going off is not an issue, but you're going to get a much more effective stop if it doesn't go off. Okay. So what you want to do with the brake is you want to brake firm, progressive, but firm. Oh yeah, okay, so let's talk about, you know, your habit of using the hold. Okay, that's to, so you, every time you stop, you kind of put the hold on, which yeah. is fine because that's in your instructor's car. But then you've put the hold on and you kind of lift the clutch up, don't you? But you're waiting at a red light with your clutch half up. Now, what, why is that an issue? Why do you think that would be an issue? Okay, well, having the clutch up like that, your clutch plates are, are ready to go. So okay. it's more wear and tear. You're kind of burning them, bringing them to that point. But because the hold is on, the car won't let you move off. Yeah. So the plates are ready and the car's ready, but the traffic lights are just red. So in terms of wear and tear on the clutch plates, it's not good practice for you yeah. uh, to do that because it's going to burn up the clutch plates over time. Um, if you know you're waiting, you might as well wait with the clutch down fully or even in, in neutral. Some people like to wait like that. Yeah, it's because I kind of learnt like that. It's because they always say like, okay, get ready. Get ready, yeah. yeah. So no, just... it's just for you, generally, like with my car and probably with your instructor's car as well, when you bring the clutch up even a little bit, the car starts to rev. You can hear it, can't mm -hmm. you? Okay, so you're waiting at a red light and the car's revving. <laughs> so it's just wasting fuel, especially with the economy right now. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to be doing that? <laughs> so wait with the clutch down, brake on or hold on, doesn't matter. And then as soon as you want to go, that's when you want to balance and get that position. Again, this is not something that the examiner is going to talk about. This is more for you. Yeah. Because when you get in your own car afterwards, you don't really want to be doing these things, do you? I mean, my dad's a mechanic, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let me know. We can sort the clutch out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, not much else. Like, you're a really good driver. You know what you're doing. You're really getting on with it. Signs, keeping up with speeds and stuff. All good. You even moved back into the normal driving position when you realised you were in the overtaking lane. Yeah. You held off a little bit and then you realised, so that was good. It clicked in when I saw the join-in, the join-in, uh, I don't know what you call it. But the I was like, coming in, yeah. oh, I'm in the overtaking lane. Because it didn't, because my instructor told me when it has different uh, destinations, yeah. it's fine. But when it doesn't and it all goes to the same place. Yes, yeah, that's it. So if there's off. no signs, that's normal. Um, and then we had to go around Greenford roundabout a few times, didn't we? Yep. <laughs> Oh, so God. you know when you realised, you were like, oh, I'm in the wrong lane. I thought, great, she realises. At that point, all you needed to do was just check your left side and it was empty. Okay. You could have just switched over. Because we went uh... right next to the exit, but it was fine. You went back round, that was completely fine. But you moved off three times in second gear at that roundabout. Do you know what? That is a little bit of a habit of mine. <laughs> as long as it works, it doesn't matter. So as long as you don't actually switch off in second gear, I was like, mm, it's going to go, it's going to go. But no, you had a good habit of actually controlling it. So that was good that you were using the accelerator. But every car's different, so be careful with that as well. Yeah. yeah. 
So overall, not a lot you need to sort out. So good luck with your test. I hope it goes well. How was the mock test experience for you? I think having this experience, it's low-key kind of prepared me for what is going to happen in my mm. actual test. So I think when I go away today, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask my instructor, can we do a mock test again? Because <laughs> I think it was beneficial. Definitely, yeah. Okay, well, really well done for today. And thank you for being on the channel. Thanks for having me. Thank you for everyone that's been watching. So hopefully Tyra's mock test has been useful for you guys as well. Don't forget to like the video, comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And you can add me on my socials. I've got them in the description box, so they're down there. But yeah, thank you and bye for now. <laughs> really well done.